This is Winning Cures Everything. NFL Week 2. It is time for us to preview the biggest games of the week. And, man, we have got a full slate of games. I like, I like the games. Uh, this is So we always try and hit on the biggest and most interesting games. So, of course, we're going to have our Thursday night games, the, the Sunday afternoon game, the Sunday night game, and the Monday night game. And then whatever the biggest games are from the noon slate on Sunday. Well, the noon slate on Sunday this week is absolutely stacked with games. I mean, it is. These are fantastic stuff. Uh, Matt said that's like winning the award for world's tallest midget. Talking about Ohio State getting to getting to four and zero. Good gracious. Um, Can right, we so, say midget on the air anymore? I, yeah, I think so. I don't. I don't. I don't know that that's okay. Well, it, it, I mean, I just said it. I didn't mean to. I, mean, I was asking. I used to get called that all the time in high school. I know you did, and I probably <laughs> called you that too because I was an asshole back then. Hey, I'm it's all good. Hey, you you weren't the only one. It's okay. It uh, well, doesn't make it any better. It well, agreed, agreed. But it, I, I don't believe that it's. Um, I don't believe it's like awful. It, it Maybe I'm wrong. A, either way, either way, I think it's a derogatory term. Enough about that. Let's talk about some NFL. Last week we did our recap on Monday. Fantastic, lots of good stuff. Uh, we have not talked about the Monday night games. The Steelers did exactly what you said they would do. That Giants team is. Pretty awful. That offensive line, not very good. Um, Terry said they prefer little people. Okay. We, we got an answer here. Uh, Thank you, along Terry. with that, uh, so the Giants, offensive line, awful. Saquon Barkley ran the ball 15 times, 11 times he was hit in the backfield before he ever How's got that the that for the best coach. running back in football? Good Lord. All right. Uh, and, and so the, the Steelers did exactly what you said, and then the media did exactly what you said they would do, which is. Everybody thinks the Big Ben is the greatest in the world. Always oh, back. Going to the Super fantastic. Bowl. They're winning the AFC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It. So you you were right. So we'll see exactly what they do this week. Um, and then the late night game on Monday night was a complete and total debacle with the Titans and the Broncos. Uh, both of them were apparently really trying to lose the game. Steven Goskowski missed four really kicks. Really bad. One extra point and three field goals. Um he, it was a re- listen, if Bill cuts you, everybody else just needs to run away. Yeah. Okay? That guy knows what the hell he's doing. All right? I'm just telling you, if he lets you go, you just need to call your mama and find something else to do for a living because you're not good at whatever he released you from. Yes. Uh, Guskowski missing three field goals and one extra point, but he did hit the, the chip shot field goal at the end of the game. And Vic Fangio... Uh, I guess there is a black market for timeouts or something. I mean, I, I don't know what it is, but he just let them continue to run Derrick Henry down the field and continue to run clock, and they kicked a field goal with 17 seconds left. Didn't give his offense a chance to uh, to come back down the field. Uh, it was just a mess. So 16-14, Titans get the win, and now the Titans get to come home after ending the game at like 1.15 a.m. Eastern time. I mean, it was just <laughs> absurd. Like, incredibly yeah. late, just ridiculous. So, uh, so we're going to move into week two here. Let's go ahead and move into the Thursday night game. This is tomorrow night on the NFL Network. So we have already had some friends hitting both of us up and ask, hey, how in the world can I stream this game? <laughs> because some people do not get the NFL Network. Um, that's the only way that you can watch it this week, from what I understand. I don't think that they have the Twitter deal right now. So Are they not simulcasting it on uh, NBC? Nope, it is not on NBC. It's not on Fox. The Fox stuff doesn't start until week four, I believe. This ain't on now. Remember when we talk about ratings? Remember this conversation right here, Gary. <laughs> A lot of people don't have these damn channels because they cut the cord. Yeah, but but the, the rating stuff where you and I were arguing last, well, uh, yesterday, I guess it was, uh, it, those were all on network TV. Like that was it, none of that was. But ESPN people are still or cable cutting the cord. Nobody. A lot of people still don't want. If you're a cord cutter, if you have nothing but Amazon Prime and Netflix and Hulu, you're you're not you're not getting regular TV either. Uh, you may be, but that that does mean that people are not watching the games. So oh, I but that's that. that's why the ratings were down. But either but way, they're only not watching the game. They're only not watching the games because they've chosen to cut the cord, not because of a protest. Well, it, it, I think they're not a making a statement. They're trying to save some dough. That, I think that's a big part of it too. I think it's hard lot, out here in the streets. There's a lot of things that are causing the decline in ratings, and it is what it is. It, it okay. could be that they're watching other things right now. It could be that throughout this pandemic, they have gotten into um, all of these other things. That uh, they're interested in hanging out with their family more. They're just not worried no, about football anymore. I mean, we've all knows? hung out with our family too damn much to all this. <laughs> now it's time to get away from the family. Uh, Terry jumped time in. Time to said, watch football. Terry said, "I jailbreak my fire stick so I can watch." <laughs> I'm gonna need 
to allegedly learn how to do that. That is a, it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Um, all right, so let's move to the Thursday night game on NFL Network like we just talked about. It is the battle for Ohio. The Cincinnati Bengals are a six-point underdog at the Cleveland Browns, and Baker Mayfield is bad at football. Holy mackerel, he did not look good. Now, I understand that he was playing against the Ravens, but good gracious. Uh, Joey Burrow at, threw a pick at, that, you know, one is is what it is, but he... It's just his, a rookie mistake. Yeah, it's just a dumb mistake. He he led his team down the field. That final and, drive was beautiful. Yes, it was. He it was looked, taken from him. He looked like he belonged in this spot. Yeah. He was and, yeah. cool as the other side of the pillow, as yep. Stuart Scott used to say. At the guy... You you said it the other day. It looked like his blood pressure never got above one twenty. I mean, it was during just, that last minute and a half, uh, that dude just ice man just in his veins. Yes, looked 100%. like he was made for this. I and handsome. Mm, oh yeah, he is a good looking man. That yeah, is a yes, good is. looking man. Yes, he is. Uh, Baker Mayfield, maybe not so much. Uh, no, with, with that said, like a troll doll. So there's there's rumors out today about uh, about OBJ. And and them possibly shopping OBJ like it, and it, we we heard this last year too. I mean, it it is what it is. I he did not play well on Sunday, um, nope. but but nobody played well for the Browns. Baker didn't play well. I'm uh, so all right. I beat up the Browns in the recap. Okay, but I I don't think they're as bad as they showed on Sunday. I agree. I think that might be the best football team in the country that they just played. Yeah, it's, it's I, I think possible. the Ravens really might be the most complete dominating team in the country. And I think they're going to show that as we go throughout the season. I, I beat up the Brownies a little bit harsher than I should. I'm frustrated with Baker because I saw this all last year and I don't like excuses of the coaching is bad because at some point in time, I've seen really good quarterbacks play with really bad coaches and they figure it out. They still look good. They still make good reads. They still make good throws. He's got bad footwork. He's got bad mechanics. His accuracy isn't close to being on. And when you're his size and you throw the ball the way he does, you have to be accurate. All right. Yes. You either, if you're going to be inaccurate, you better damn well be able to play like Josh Allen. Okay. Yeah. You'd be able to be able to run for 120 yards a game, two touchdowns, and you better be able to have a cannon for an arm. All right. You can't be inaccurate and short and slow. And, like you can't have all of these problems. Inaccuracy is the biggest of them because you can be all these bad things, but if you are persi- surgeon precision accurate, you can be great in this league. Yes. Go call can. Drew Brees. Go call Paid Manning. Go call Tom Brady. Terry, these guys are surgeons. Terry jumped in on Facebook and said, Wow, hard eyes just popped up on Chris when he talked about Burrow. <laughs> uh yes, sir. All right, I'll go ahead and tell you. I'm taking the Bengals plus six here. Uh, I, yes. This is a division game. I mean, the Bengals won in, in, in Week 17 last year against the Browns, um, and the Bengals were not nearly as good. I mean, I think Jeff Driscoll was playing quarterback, right? I mean, it was just a, it, yeah. it was I don't, a terrible team. I don't team. know that the Browns – there's a chance that the Browns could turn this around because yeah. the Ravens really are that good, and maybe the Ravens just made them look that bad, okay? And that's – I kind of hope that. I hope – that the Browns get better and look better. And that's, that's the hardest game they're going to play the rest of the year. The schedule should soften up a lot, not a little, a lot. Um, what I just don't know, man. And I'm damn sure not laying almost a touchdown. This Bengals team, I think is, is probably a better football team than them. I, it, it seems that way. I mean, they, everybody's healthy right now. It's the beginning of the season. Uh, I understand it's on the road, but man, like I, I mean, it's I like not the, really on the road. I mean, that because I don't think these road games are a big deal right now. No, but, and there's there's like no travel with this. So no. it, it, both of them are coming off the same amount of rest. You know, I I think they're totally fine. Darren McCardle jumped in, said Bengals plus six and the money line here. Uh, yeah, Archie, oh yeah, this will definitely be in my money line in, in my money line uh, round robin. Robin uh, Archie Archie Gray said. Uh, so what we're saying is Browns minus six. Uh, <laughs> you can say that all you want. Hey. I'm I'm taking the Bengals plus the plus the uh, the points here, so I yeah. I like I like Joe Burrow in this bunch here. My I, NFL I think, picks aren't nearly as bad as my college picks. Okay, no, you no, look you at had, my college numbers. You better look again when you get to the NFL, my friend. We um we did we both did okay last week in the NFL. Um, we'll uh, we'll go over two? the we'll go over the recap here in just a, a little bit once okay. we get to the actual best bets. Um, and so we both got Bengals on this one. Um, let's move to the Sunday games. Sunday noon games, 
let's go over, and, and there's a few of them here. So we're going to kind of fly through these. Rams at the Eagles. It is a pick them pretty much. In some places you can get the Rams minus one, minus one and a half. Uh, it, it's pick them at several other spots. I, I, I got to tell you, I mean, the Eagles opened up a four-point favorite. They're getting back some of their offensive line that was out in game one. And I'm always hesitant to to just completely dog on a team after they have a, a bad week one and whatnot. Yeah. And and the Rams look good, but this is, you know, West Coast team coming to East Coast for a noon kick and all that kind of mess. I, I got that. But, man, I it is really hard not to go Rams here. Like, I, I, I think the Rams can find a way to uh, to win this ball game. I, I just I don't like the Eagles at all. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that. I think – I, I'm. I don't know. I wouldn't bet this game. All right. I'm not playing it. I'm. Yeah. I'm a hard stay away. But if I had to bet it, I'm playing the Rams again, man. I just. I just don't like this ego. See, I don't think Carson Wentz is good at football. I. I, nope. I mean, everybody. You turn on any football show in the league, it, NFL Network. You can watch ESPN. You can Fox. Watch Fox. You can watch them all. It doesn't. Man, they are slurping this guy like he is the second coming of Jesus. And it's always, oh, his guys are just injured all the time. How many other quarterbacks deal with injury constantly? Yeah. I mean, it's, I just it's, don't it's see it. I just don't know what everybody else is looking at. I see bad throws when I watch him play. The reason his tight ends get all of his passes and his running backs get all of his passes is because he can't throw the ball downfield. If well, he could throw it downfield, he would hit receivers. But you dump it off to tight ends and you dump it off to running backs and let them do stuff after the catch and they make you look good. Uh, That's not a great quarterback. No, it's not. Archie Gray jumped in and said, you guys are the easiest fade. You can't bet against a guy who likes to get crapped on. <laughs> Talking about OBJ, of course. <laughs> well, if you bet against him last week, you would have been good. Yep, yep, there you go. So, either way, either way. Um, all right, so uh, so we both like the Rams here. Moving into Broncos at the Steelers. This one opened up, what, four and a half, five, I think? And it is now at the Steelers minus seven and a half. Did yes, you, sir. Did you think I love the it. Broncos... This is exactly what I said was going to happen, Gary. Oh, yeah, no, it's exactly right. Did you think the Broncos looked that bad on Monday night? No, I didn't no. either. But this this isn't about the Broncos. This is this is Big Ben coming down. Like, this is my second Jesus reference. Just just like he's the savior of Pittsburgh, and they are about to get slapped down. They're not that good. I I don't know that they're going to get slapped down, but but over Seven a touchdown and a half points over a touchdown you is more absurd. than a touchdown. I mean it, it's it's crazy. Like I, there, I there's no reason. Insane. There's no reason this should be over a touchdown. Like at all, that's insane. That that Broncos team is not a bad team at all. No, I mean, they, they had the plenty of opportunities. Are fine, but yeah. they're not great. Agreed. I, I'm I'm rolling Broncos all day on this one. Um, I mean, I just I, I think at this this is a you know field goal four point game something like that. Maybe maybe a touchdown, but I, I don't yeah. see it being more than that. I I think Drew Lock looked okay. I think Jerry Judy he had a couple of drops, but I, you know at first game jitters, first NFL game jitters like I. You can kind of expect that out of a rookie that is put into a prime time spot, uh, especially in his first game when Cortland Sutton is out. So he's got added importance on him, like he's got an extra spotlight. I, I think that the Broncos are going to end up looking really good uh, I do too. this week. You know, this even is a pretty the good. De- this is a pretty good defense. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing might be the under in this game, which I don't have it pulled up. Maybe I do. Forty three. 41, 41 and a half. That's I mean, I might, I might would go under that. That doesn't but, scare me. I mean, I, I really think I might would go under that. So I'm not afraid of that number. Me either. Me either. Because I could totally see this being a 17 to 10 game. I mean, 100%. So it, it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, so we, we both like Broncos there. Let's, uh, let's roll Falcons at the Cowboys. This one opened. Cowboys minus uh, a touchdown, I believe. Yeah, minus seven and a yeah, half. It is seven down. And a half. It is down to four and a half now. Um, and it's not that Atlanta looked great last week. It's that man, it, the Cowboys are already dealing with injuries. They got offensive line injuries. Uh, Sean Lee is out for, and he didn't play in the first game. But now they're saying that he's going to be out for yeah. an extended amount of time because of that surgery. Uh, uh, Van Der Esch is going to. He's out for what six to eight weeks. 
something like that. I mean, he's he's gone for a oh, while. There's going to be points to be had here. This over under is 53, 52 and a half. Yeah, open I, I think that is not close. It. Uh, well, I will say this: the Cowboys and the Rams did not get there, but that was Week One. That's that was Week One. That out. was Week One. And and this is now. And in, Aaron Donald was blowing up that Cowboys offensive oh, line. And yes, and and the Falcons do not have the Falcons like won't that. won't be doing that. No, they will not. So I, I like the over here. Um, but I, I'll probably still roll Cowboys on this one. I, I don't, you know, Cowboys at home. You can't let uh, another one get away from you. You got to win this, this game. This is in my gambling picks. Uh, okay, well then I'm. I'll stay away. I'll. I, I won't. I won't ask you about it. But uh. But yeah. I'll. I'll I'm going to take the Cowboys on this one. Um, next one for us on the noon slate. We've only got two more in the noon slate. Vikings as a three-point underdog at the Colts. This is a pretty big game for both teams. Both of yep. these teams had uh, division title, you know, odds or whatever. They were both favored to win their division. They, they were favored to That's win the their division in both their divisions. And, both of and them opened up with losses. For the conference. Yes. And statistics say if you start off 0 and 2, you're not making the playoffs. You are correct. Somebody's uh, starting off 0 and 2. Uh Sean jumps in on on Periscope, by the way, said I have a problem. Um, I have the 49ers defense. What should I do? Uh hold on to them. They're gonna Keep be just them. fine. Yeah. Well, the 49ers defense, fine. hang on. In fantasy, they're gonna be A, just fine. B, you get the Jets this week, man. If anything's gonna make your defense look good, it is the Jet. Adam Gase coming to town. Yeah. Uh, Archie Gray, by the way, said, how did you guys do in the first week debating my Browns minus six now? Ha ha. Uh, uh, I did three Chris, and two. Chris I went three and two. Games. I went three and two. Yeah, and, uh, and and I went two, two, and one. And had the, yeah. had the Bengals come through for me at the end there, I would have been three and two as well. So, uh, But instead, they pushed my plus three, and it, it is what it is. If the but, Bengals uh, came through, do you know how much money I'd have made on that money line parlay? Oh, I, I, just a, a mass fortune. Because, I, I mean, they were in your round robin, so. I had, I had them. I had Washington called it. Called it. Nailed yep, it. Go ahead. Did. Let's go. Um, so Vikings and Colts. This, this is a this is a problem. Uh, it's in Indy. I, I have no idea what I, I'm going to watch a lot of this game. This will be on an iPad or something to where I can I can isolate it. I have no clue what's going to happen in this game. I am going to roll with the Vikings on this one. I if I had to make a pick, yes, I am yeah. trusting. Uh, I'm about to say I I trust Kirk Cousins over. <laughs> Over Philip Rivers, that feels weird to say. Yeah, it does. It does, but that's okay. That's okay. I mean, it. You know, I, I mean, it's it, like if we're at the bar, be like, mm, "There's two threes over there. I'll take the one with the lazy guy." <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm. You don't even know what you're picking, but I like everything else around Kirk Cousins as opposed to what is around Philip Rivers. Even though Philip Rivers has a good offensive line and whatnot, they lost Marlon Mack, so that's kind of a problem. Now Hines looked pretty good as a as a running back option, but you know Marlon Mack is out now. Jonathan it, Taylor looked great as a running yeah, back. He Jonathan did. Taylor did just fine. It, he was he was good. He was good. So I, do you, you know, think? Zimmer but I like Dalvin Cook going, better. So do you think Zimmer is going to just have too much pride to let two defenses, two offenses score forty on him? A hundred percent. I mean, I, mean, I think be, Mike Zimmer is going to have this defense. I don't yes. know about the dudes that they have starting. I know they got guys out and go. The guys got they got guys hurt. I think Mike Zimmer's got too much pride, and he's been around this league too long. I love Frank Wright. I think you give me the chess match. You give me Mike Zimmer. I'll take it. I might be wrong, but I'll take it. I'm I'm with you. Hey, hold on two seconds. All right. Oh, you, you can grab him. That's, that's fine. So, uh, <laughs> one of my wife's friends is here, and. Uh, and my son just woke up from his nap early. So, uh, he is, man, you talk about a mess. It's been a long day, Chris. Very long day. Um, so, all right, so we both like the Vikings here. I, I do agree with you that the Vikings, at, not going to let this happen again. Uh, that was that was embarrassment last week. Just absolute embarrassment. Uh, and I don't know that the Colts can fix the problem that Phillip Rivers has. Like, that. that's an issue. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see. So, I thought about this for the Browns. I'm going to tell you, I've told you this before the season started, that if Baker's not good, I think he gets a quick hook, a quick yeah, hook, case, because they case can't him. continue to waste time. I think this roster is really good. And if he's bad, I think I think they trust Case Keenum. I wonder, does Frank Wright say, man, we can do this with, you know, with Jacoby? Yeah. Yeah, I think it, that's. 
It's very possible because everything else is in place. Because you can't just waste seasons. Not, you not just when, can't. It's not when too you're hard to win in the NFL. Yeah, not, not when you were built to compete, period. Yeah. Like, that's the way it goes. Um, last one for the noon slate. That would be the Lions at the Packers. Uh, Packers are a six-point favorite in this game. And I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this is under a touchdown. I'm going to take the Packers here. Uh, Packers were, let's see, it opened as a... I don't know where the game went. Uh, Packers opened as a six and a half point favorite. It has dropped to six. So the people like the Lions. Packers are going back home for this game. I like the Packers in this spot because the two cornerbacks that that went out last week for the Lions still have not practiced this week. We are on Wednesday afternoon. I, I went and looked today. They did not practice today. Jeff Okuda, it looks like he was in full pads today. He was ready to go but he is a rookie, and this will be his first game against Aaron Rodgers. And that receiving core looked incredible last week. Now, yeah. would it surprise me if this comes down to a field goal because it's it's the Lions and the Packers, and that's exactly what they do? It's Absolutely. just a divisional game, and, yeah, weird stuff happens. Yeah, I, I'm i I'm curious. Like, I, I want to see I'm gonna it. Need, it's so weird, man. That Packers defense was so great last year. What the hell happened Sunday? I... Uh, <laughs> You've got me. I mean, I'll tell you this. I think this Lions offense is better than the Vikings offense. You, you might be right. Uh, I that, think Kenny, the only thing that scares me is, is can they keep the Lions from scoring? Uh, Kenny Galladay was out last week. That, Kenny that Galladay's could be practiced all week. Yeah, so he's, he's supposed to be back. He's supposed to be back, and we'll see. We will see. He's still questionable, um, but he's supposed to be back. Let's see. Sean jumps in on Periscope. He said, how many more games until we see Tua? Uh, uh, a lot. It, it's going to be a little while. I it's think a lot. A uh, Matt said, uh, d- 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 what is that friction? Oh, wait, we got somebody that jumped in. Uh, if you need real free and high quality service to increase your viewers, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he said, is that a scammer? Yeah, it looks like a scammer. We, sometimes you get bots that jump in these things. Matt Miller said, after Thanksgiving, Dolphins have a buy. That's when you're going to see to it. Yeah, it, it'll be a little while. The, the Dolphins are not rushing this back. All right, so I'm, no. I'm taking the Packers minus six. Uh, d- did you, are you taking, uh, the Lions? If I had to make a pick on a big game, I'll, I'll take the Lions. Okay. All right. I don't like it, but I I don't I but wouldn't bet this. But game. you'll take it. I'm with you. All right, uh, let's move into the afternoon slate on Sunday. Uh Ravens minus seven at the Texans. And I don't believe that this is nearly enough points. I am rolling with the Ravens here. Uh the Texans have just an awful rushing defense. I mean, they yep. are putrid. Absolutely putrid. So, um, uh, I'm going to roll with that. I, I like the Ravens a lot in this slot. They are maybe the best rushing offense in the NFL. And, yep, and now you 100%. get to go against maybe the worst rushing defense in the NFL. Yeah, uh, I don't me, know if they're the that. worst rushing defense, but this is definitely the worst, uh, the best rushing offense. And, and it's going to get ugly, and I think it's going to get ugly fast. I think this Baltimore team is pissed off. I think they're going to beat the hell out of a lot of people this year. I, I really agree. do. I agree with you. Um, let's do Chiefs minus eight and a half at the Chargers. Um, this is, this is strange. I, I don't where know. Would where would you have to have this number for you to feel good taking the Chargers? Ten and a half. I think, I think that sounds good. That sounds good. I have no idea the answer that I was going to give. I, I could see said ten, when you I, said 10 and a half, I thought, okay, I, I, I would felt consider, like I would start considering it there. I, I feel like the chiefs can, can pretty much name their number and they did against the Texans. And once they got up big, they just, they just came back, you know, like I, they, they let yeah. the Texans do whatever. And they, it got back to being close and it was just whatever they, they could name their score. And I, I think, you know, anything under 10 here, uh, I'm going to roll with the chiefs. Yeah, I think like, so too. I, I, listen, there's not a I mean, the Chargers' defense is far and away better than the Texans' defense, but I we just haven't seen anything like this this yeah. offense before ever. Christian jumped in and said, "Roll with the Chiefs until proven otherwise." Oh yeah, that's yeah. yeah you ride until she bucks or you don't ride at all. You have got that right. Hey, I'm gonna run grab this boy real quick. The next one on the slate is Pats and Seahawks. My wife. Is I'll not talk home about yet. that. You talk about the Pats and Seahawks. I will be right back. Okay. <laughs> this is this is now a Patriot show, and we're not gonna talk about the Seahawks very much anymore at all. Um, Cameron Newton is the savior for the New England Patriots. 
and he is about to bring this offense into a whole new life. They're going to go up to Seattle, and they're going to kick their butt, and they're going to get that win. Russell Wilson's probably going to look good. He's probably going to try to show off for Bill Belichick, and I think we're going to look a lot like the Super Bowl, which Pete Carroll's going to do something stupid at the end. The Patriots' defense is going to make a great play, and the Pats are going to win this ball game. I don't know what Gary thinks. I'm certain he disagrees with me. I am really curious to know what the um, Patriots offense will look like this week because I know Bill and I follow this team well enough. I know people don't want to hear about the Patriots, but Gary's gone, so this is what you're getting. Um, I follow this team enough to know that every week they game plan completely different than the week beforehand. Are they going to continue with this triple option threat? against linebackers uh, like 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 Wagner and these dudes that are hard-hitting, or are they going to say, listen, this Seattle team can't really cover people. Their cornerbacks aren't as good as they used to be, and now we're going to stretch them. We're going to test them, and will we see Cam sling it a little bit? Will we see uh, the receivers kind of get a little loose, and will we see them air it out? On the Seattle side, Seattle – I think they they get back to running the football this week. Last week, uh, Pete Carroll let Russ cook, and that was against Arizona. Or not Arizona, Atlanta. And Atlanta's defense is just slaw. They're just terrible. Okay, I don't think Russ is going to be able to cook against the Patriots. This is one of the best secondaries in the league, if not the best, and I think they are going to get back to – I think as soon as Pete Carroll – gets any opposition he's going to revert to his old ways it's what we middle-aged men do he is an old man and i i think he's going to immediately pull the reins back and he's going to say we're going to run the football we're going to play conservative and we're going to try to only have big plays down the field but other than that we don't throw the ball anymore and if you get one dimensional against bill belichick he is going to eat you alive i will be betting on my patriots a lot of that is biasy, but I I kind of think anytime Bill's catching points, it's just scary to to go against him. You let him start off with a lead, it's it's really hard to think that that he can't win any game he, he's coaching in. So we're gonna move on from that because I don't have anything else to say about it. The line opened at three and a half. It's uh, basically three or four, pretty much everywhere. Pretty fifty fifty split on the game. No big deal. I want to talk about the Monday night football game. I think this is a travesty that they're opening the black hole in Las Vegas with no fans. There's no reason at all. I should not be there. And that makes me sad. That hurts my feelings. I was the biggest proponent of Vegas getting a football team than anybody. I think in the country outside of people that live in Las Vegas and I don't get to be there. I don't get to celebrate it. That's just a damn shame. So Gary's back. I'll let him know. We're done with the Patriots. We're on to Monday night football. And I was complaining that they're going to open the black hole without any fans, much less me being there as yeah. being the national cheerleader for getting Vegas a team. Uh, who was your pick on the Pats and Seahawks? Uh, the Patriots, sir. I, I figured it probably was. Um, I think I think I'm probably going to roll the same way. <laughs> I think if you let Bill Belichick have a head start and you want to bet against that, be my guest and you might win. That's fine. I just don't think it's smart, but yeah, but be my guest. That's fine. You won't catch any flack from me. Um, They didn't look great. Yeah. I I think, I mean, since this line is at four, I I think, I, I think I'm going to roll with that. Uh, If it was like two and a half or something like that, then maybe I might roll Seahawks because I will say this. They did surprise me last week with the whole, you know, coming out and, and let Russ cook, right? Like, they let him throw. I talked about that. But uh, This is not Atlanta. This, yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Is that this, this is not Atlanta. This is the kind of defense that yeah. you would go against, uh, you know. I, you'd be, this you'd is be, Sparta. Yeah, this you, is you, would, you would get back to running the football here. That's, like, that you get exactly back to what, what you're comfortable I said. with. They're, they're as soon, his butthole is going to tighten up real quick. Yeah. And he's going to say, nope. 
We're Chris, not doing that anymore. Christian Bramwell not working. said, what do y'all think about the Raiders' first half? You think they'll be pumped and come out swinging or the New Orleans defense too tough? They are definitely going to come out swinging oh, because this is a massive game. It's the first game in Las Vegas. They want to come out and make a statement. They they obviously were able to move the ball I think against, the Saints team might be the second best team in the league, maybe the first with the Ravens. I agree. Complete. Complete. Team. The Chiefs' offense is the best offense I've ever seen in my life. It, outside <laughs> of the... Uh, no, okay. maybe not. It's up there. It's in the conversation. The 2007 Patriots. Well, offense. yeah, but and then that that Peyton Manning's Bronco team the yeah, first year was, was like so. There's a couple, but they pale on defense compared to what the Saints and the Ravens have built. These are the two most complete teams in all of football, and it ain't close. By the way, yeah, I uh, I agree with you. I, the line is sitting at five and a half in favor of the Saints on Monday night. I. Even first half, I would probably roll Saints here. I I'm think scared. This, I'm not touching it. At, I'm afraid of it. I will be betting it at oh, Monday, Monday night because night football. it's Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only game I got, and I got to have some action on something. And I'll probably be playing the Saints, but I don't. I'm not gonna. Don't I'm not going to play a half. I'll tell you that. I, I will take no, Saints I'm gonna for the play full the game. game or I'm not. Yeah. So I, I will take Saints minus five and a half. Um, I'll tell you this, man. Breeze didn't look great. Breeze no, he didn't, didn't look great. He didn't, but uh, but this Raiders defense is not uh, is not that Bucks defense. No, they're not so, good. They're not good. Yeah, if if you're if you're letting Carolina put up thirty points on you, um, now on the other side, that Carolina defense was not great, and the Raiders, you know, put up some yardage and whatnot. And I don't think that this Saints defense is that Carolina defense. So no, this Saints defense is yeah. like th- this might be one of the top three defenses in the league. Yes, I agree. This this Saints team is loaded. Absolutely loaded. So I uh, I like the Saints here. I'm definitely now to say that they have that. mortgaged the future Wait, to we, win we now that. is the understatement of the year. They don't think we're going to play football in 2021. The based on the way they have built their salary. Well, they I, I will say this. I don't think that theirs is quite as bad as what the Rams have done. But uh, I do. You think so? I think they're like sixty something million over the cap next year already. And Drew Brees' money, if he retires, is dead. So it doesn't come off that cap. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea how they feel the team, but all in for this year? I Yeah, I would think so. I mean, that's what it sounds like. That is what it sounds like. All right. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.